the summer of 1995, geologists involved in the many aspects of diamond exploration, diamond mining and diamond research travelled from all corners of the world for the 6th International Kimberlite Conference and the first major international visit to the diamond mines of Siberia. The connecting Aeroflot flight from Moscow was comfortable and basic, but a little chaotic with dogs wandering down the aisles from time to time and people throwing beer bottles to each other. However, we landed safely at 5.15 the next morning. We walked through the airport parking lot to a dilapidated small bus and began the journey to Akademogorodok, just south of Novosibirsk. I suspect that the Russia of 1995 has not changed much in appearance since the dissolution of the Soviet Union less than four years ago at the end of 1991. After a good night's sleep, we were back in the morning at the airport. We set off from Novosibirsk to Myrny, a 2,000 kilometer journey that would bring us to the edge of the Arctic Circle. excavation of the diamond mines, in fact all development in this part of Siberia, has taken place since the discovery just 40 years ago of the first Kimberlite pipe, the host rock of diamonds. Now over a thousand Kimberlites are known and over a hundred contain diamonds. A number of these Kimberlites contain significant quantities of high quality diamonds and are currently being mined. We are to visit six of the diamond mines, plus the famous 1954 discovery site, known as Zarnitsa. We had two days of seminar presentations at the Murnir Conference Center in preparation for our geological visits. I believe that uh, they should supply us today Museum of Kimberlites, where we found mammoth tusks at the doorway and a fine selection of rock samples. On the way to the first mine, we stopped to look at the experimental dredging fields.
The Muir pipe was discovered in 1955 and was the first developed. It's a long way down to the bottom of the mine and it took quite some time to get there. Mining began in 1960 and has been underway ever since. It certainly continued all around us during our visit. some outdoor insulation that might need attention before next winter. <laughs> the apartment blocks in town have permafrost legs to insulate from winter temperatures, which can go down to minus 50 Celsius. But it can be quite warm in summer on the Arctic Circle, such as the rather unbelievable 34 degrees Celsius showing here at 6.48 in the evening. The International Naya, or International Pipe, is characterized by high quality diamonds and high grade. Although the open pit is currently abandoned, underground mining is planned. This apparently was the first house built in the town. First thing the next morning, we flew north for 500 kilometers to the next group of mines and the 1954 discovery site. These occurrences are clustered around the mining towns of Udachnaya and Eichel. We are now at the discovery site of the first Kimberlite in Siberia. In the summer of 1954, after three seasons of sampling in the wilds of Siberia, Larissa Popogaeva, a Leningrad geologist, and her assistant, Fyodor Belikov, found kimlitic garnets in some blue clay here. They dug small holes in an almost even circle, 500 meters in diameter, outlining what turned out to be the Tsarnista kimberlite pipe. They marked the pipe on the map and marked the spot with a larch pole. This location post was restored in 1994 for the 40th anniversary of the discovery. It says that you should look for diamonds, look for diamonds here on both sides of uh, the place where they had a camp and the remnants of the fire and of the tent. And the tent is over there on that side. There was uh, left a message by Papugaiva at this place. And the message was, wishing good luck to any subsequent explorers. Although this pipe was the first found, it has not yet been mined, but recent test sampling has confirmed it will be soon. Made it. The Udachnaya pipe was discovered in 1955 and mining commenced in 1971. It has been and will remain for some time a significant diamond producer on a world scale. 
The sound of hammers signifies that the geologists are at work, sample collecting. This is the processing plant known as N12 at Nudachny. Kimberlite is crushed, washed and concentrated here. At last, we see some of the production. <laughs> and we were carefully observed by the security staff. Well, it appears that uh, the first bus is broken down and the rest of the buses have stopped to lend assistance or at least moral support. Yep. As soon as it stops, burping, yeah, but then, then you lose your pressure. The only way you can play, contain the pressure is to cause a, 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 a flow of magma. And at the moment, we're wandering around in the, the taiga, looking for uh, little bits of frost boils or pieces of kimberlite or anything that might be out here. You made any discoveries today? Not, nothing yet, except that a flat tire isn't the best way to travel. <laughs> Anyone found any mushrooms yet? Mushroom? <laughs> but uh, it's kind of intriguing feeling the spongy feeling on this permafrost. Bye bye! At 59 hectares in size, the Jubilee or Jubilee pipe is the largest in the area. It was intruded into lower Paleozoic limestone. Mining began here in 1989. <laughs> They are surprised uh, that we are, we are all here because uh, they are, uh, the mine is uh, closed for visitors, for, for any visitors. And there's going to be a dynamite blast soon. <laughs> well, I think we've got to go. Mining began at the Eichel pipe. 1961. The kimberlites in this area have been dated at 345 to 390 million years. The city Kanskaya pipe was found under dolerite sills up to 70 meters thick. <laughs> the mine has produced some large diamonds, including the 241 carat Free Russia diamond found in 1991. Time to reflect on our visit. 
well within 40 years of Larissa Popogaiva's good luck message left at the discovery site, Siberia became one of the world's most important diamond producing areas. Now it's time to pack up the samples <laughs> and wind a bit. Call home and wait for the bus. Trip, how'd it go? Got to ride in the bus four times up and back on the, on the road to uh, High Call. Yeah. It's a great to do this one. Fun. Now it's time to head for the airport and leave the diamond fields behind. Very good. Oh, it's, uh, I'm pleased to hear this. Good job. 